It's been more than a year since Apple presented M1 system on chip and M1 computers. Now we have an update M1 Pro and M1 Max, which are incredibly powerful and efficient, but rather pricey. And is it really worth it? What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On channel from Russia with love. I decided to compare all of the M1 MacBooks in different configurations and pro applications side by side and find the best options for different professionals and overall best bang for buck M1 MacBook in terms of price and performance per dollar and I've watched more than 50 video reviews and comparisons online to match the results perfectly. And I want to give a huge shout out to one of my favorite tech YouTubers and also my Russian speaking fellas Max and Vadim from Max Tech. They are just crushing the YouTube game and doing such an amazing job and my research wouldn't be even possible without them. Because first, we still don't have a lot of M1 Pros and M1 Max computers here in Russia, especially in custom configurations. And also, as for now, I cannot afford spending thousands of dollars on all of the models to test them out myself. Thank you guys a lot, I really do appreciate your work and I'll leave a link to Max Tech channel down below. I have to mention that all of the M1 computers have crazy value and performance in most of the tasks compared to the Intel models and to prove that let's take a look at comparison of $1000 MacBook Air base model and $3900 Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro with 5600M graphics. So guys now let's have a precise look at different applications. Logic Pro is for music creators and we can see that a computer that costs almost four times less can handle almost the same amount of tracks, 90 versus 97. Xcode is for the guys who are working with code, obviously, and it's much faster than the $4,000 almost machine. In Lightroom we do see a slightly slower performance, but considering the price, the value per dollar is very high. Of course, working with 8K Red Raw is much slower on the MacBook Air and no one is expecting very fast speeds from such cheap computer in this tough situation. But the regular 5-minute H.264 export in Final Cut is kind of the same, which is very impressive. And when we take into consideration some new codecs like H.265 from Canon R5, which is a very tough codec to work with, we see a dramatic even more than three times difference and the air is winning right here thanks to hardware encoders and decoders. And all of this performance is using four times less energy. Wow. So now let's talk about the cheapest M1 MacBook in the lineup, MacBook Air with M1 system on chip. I suggest buying only the base model and you can buy it from $850 to $1000 depending on the deals you find in the internet. 256 gigs is more than enough for programs and I used 2019 MacBook Pro 13 inch with Intel processor and it had only 128 gigs of internal storage and it had almost no issues. Instead you'd better buy an external SSD drive like Samsung T5 for one or two terabytes and edit photos and videos off of it. And also you can buy something like Seagate 4 terabyte drive HDD for storing your data. I don't see a reason for upgrades of M1 MacBook Air because it's meant to be one of the cheapest yet very powerful laptops out there. So if you are limited in terms of budget but want great portability and very impressive performance, M1 MacBook Air is one of the best on the market and you can't go wrong with it. It's just a dream for travelers since it's that light and compact. You would ask me, shouldn't I get the MacBook Pro with M1 instead? It should have better performance because of extra core, active cooling system and a touch bar. And my answer is no. According to Max Tech tests, the difference in real life performance is so negligible that you don't even notice it and it absolutely doesn't worth extra $300 to $400. Overall, the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch is now the worst bang for a buck in M1 lineup. The only benefit of it is a real good battery life, like 20 to 30 percent better than the MacBook Air. And the MacBook Air is the best bang for a buck laptop on the market right now in my opinion. So let's have a closer look at the difference between the Air and MacBook Pro 13 inch with M1 chip. So you pay around $300 more and here are the differences you get. Only three tracks more in Logic Pro, 
only 17 seconds less in Xcode, around 20-25 seconds in Lightroom export and the same editing experience. And even in extreme and long stress tests like 8K Red Raw, we see not that big of a difference, like 2.5 minutes. In the Final Cut Pro X exporting H.264, the difference is only 2 seconds and also the MacBook Air is completely fanless and you see that the fans on the MacBook Pro M1 is not giving a performance boost. And now let's compare M1 MacBook Air to twice as pricey base 14-inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro chip. It has been CPU and GPU cores and let's see if the difference is really worth two times the price. So guys, I won't read the numbers, I will tell you only the percentage difference. In Logic Pro we have 30% difference for MacBook Pro 14, in Xcode 32% difference, in Lightroom around 62% difference, so for Lightroom users we have also a bit smoother editing performance as well on the 14 inch. The ProRes export is around 4 times faster on the M1 Pro thanks to better dedicated encoders, but the export of 4K 5 minute clip in H.264 difference is only 6%, so if you are not using ProRes footage or ProRes codecs, the base MacBook Air with M1 is just a killer. And also let's throw in some 3D stuff, the Blender, Party Talk, Benchmark, and we see the 90% difference. And now it's time to talk about the difference between M1 Pro and M1 Max systems on chip. The important part, M1 Pro and M1 Max have almost no difference in performance inside apps like Lightroom, Photoshop, Final Cut Pro X and DaVinci Resolve at least if you are not working with Multicam 8K, and you probably are not. And the difference is mainly between the final render and export times. In video, M1 Max has double the encoders for ProRes and H.264, and H.265 in particular, so it does export the files faster. But remember, while exporting you can grab a cup of coffee, have dinner, or check your mail or make a thumbnail for your video, so it's not as important as the performance inside the program while you're editing, because you lose seconds while editing and they stack up in minutes and even hours or days of time. So let's have a look at real-world tests in different applications with M1 Pro and M1 Max machines. So here we have M1 Pro 16-inch for $2500 versus M1 Max 16-inch for $3500, a thousand dollars difference. So what do we have here? First of all, I have to mention that 1TB SSD on the M1 Max has faster speeds and it's confirmed and it's a pretty substantial difference and it's nice to upgrade your SSD if you are buying M1 Pro 16-inch to 1TB at least to have faster speeds. Also, M1 Max turns on fans faster, but only under very heavy loads, and I've never heard the fans of the M1 Pro even exporting 8K footage. And also, the battery life difference is around 30%. The M1 Pro is just a killer in this term, and it has outstanding battery life. So, the M1 Max has double the video encoders, as I said before, and double the GPU cores, and in theory it should have 2x faster performance in graphic-related tasks and video exports. So let's have a look. So Logic Pro 35% difference, in Xcode it's only 18% difference, so M1 Max is not worth it for Xcode I guess. And the M1 Max is totally not worth it for Lightroom because those computers have exactly the same performance inside the app and the export time difference is also like negligible. 8K Canon RAW with 100 GPU load is giving us 35% difference, but it's not two times scaling, which is sad. In Final Cut Pro X, the export of H.264 codec is 56% faster, but still not two times. And the same works for 3D graphics, only 50% difference, 6 seconds versus 9 seconds, so it doesn't worth it for 3D graphics as well. It's not two times scaling. So 95% of videographers will be really happy with the base M1 Pro 16 inch and I bought this exact model for my wife and she's a photographer and mostly works in Lightroom and Photoshop. And I think 16 inch is totally worth spending extra $200, especially considering M1 Max model because 14 inch with M1 Max thermal throttles a lot 
and almost matches the performance of M1 Pro and in my opinion has absolutely zero sense. If you absolutely need maximum portability, base 14-inch M1 Pro with binned 8-core CPU and also binned 14-core GPU for $2000 seems like a good choice. So now let's take a look at the performance difference of 14 and 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pros with the same specs. So Logic Pro, the same performance but louder fans on the 14-inch. In Lightroom we have the same editing experience and the same export time. With 8K Canon RAW from R5 with 100% GPU load we have almost the same time but the 14 inch is much louder because of the fans. Exporting 4K 5 minutes in H.264 codec is exactly the same because the encoders are exactly the same. The Blender Potty Tuck is also the same but the fans are a bit louder. And overall the 14 inch has less battery life around 30%. I think 16 inch is the best choice for comfort work and best performance and M1 MacBook Air is the best travel portable device. So I would choose between M1 MacBook Air and the 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro and I wouldn't consider 14 inch anyway. But those are only my thoughts. But what if we compare the cheapest $2000 M1 Pro 14 inch with $3500 16 inch M1 Max? Will it be annihilated? So guys, what do we see here? In Logic Pro we do get a boost of 35%, which is pretty nice. But is it really worth $1500 more? I'm not sure. In Xcode the boost is only 18%. In Lightroom export only 26%. The battery life of those two computers is kind of the same no matter that the M1 Max model is physically bigger and it has bigger battery. Final Cut Pro 10 4K 5 minute H.264 export is only 56% better on the M1 Max and if we compare it to the M1 MacBook Air for $1000 it's only 66% difference which is crazy. So if you work with those codecs only, the MacBook Air with M1 chip is just a dream. And the 60% difference in Blender Potty Talk benchmark. And let me say guys, the difference is not really dramatic, considering the price difference and the binned GPU and CPU cores of the 14-inch base model. Okay, we see almost all the comparisons, but what about the RAM upgrades? or unified memory, as we should properly call it, because we have unified memory for both the CPU and GPU. Shall you upgrade any of your machines in this term? In Xcode it's equal. So for Lightroom we see the same editing experience and almost no difference in export. In Final Cut Pro 10 5 minute Pro Res export with a lot of background apps open we see only 6 seconds difference. <laughs> Does it worth it? In Blender it's equal and it has equal performance under heavy load with a ton of apps open and browser pages and etc. And 64 gigs on the M1 Max just doesn't have any sense for real world applications. Check out the video from MaxTech channel if you want to see more details. So after watching all of those tests, my answer is no. Stick to the base unified memory option and you'll be totally fine. So guys, here come my final thoughts and conclusions. M1 MacBook Air is still the best bang for a buck, that's for sure. Base 14 inch for $2000 is awesome if you don't need a larger screen, but remember that you can always buy an iPad and use Sidecar feature, for instance, to increase the real estate of your screen. Base 16 inch M1 Pro is the best choice for almost 90% of Pro users with the best battery life and quietest performance among all of those and also a lot of power under its sleeve. Base 16 inch M1 Max is for those who export dozens of videos on a daily basis, wants to play AAA games on their Mac or works with 3D graphics or 8K raw video. Or for me as a YouTuber who wants to show you the difference on my own experience and probably become very sad that I spent extra $1000 for almost no boost in performance, noisier fans and 30% worse battery life. But it's life of a YouTuber, you know. The only upgrade I would suggest is the 1TB of storage because it is faster and computer uses SSD as a swap memory from time to time so you have slightly better performance and more internal storage after all. And now let's talk about Pro Applications Best Value MacBooks. For Logic Pro you get $11.3 per track with your MacBook Air, $17.3 for base 14-inch MacBook Pro for $2000 and $22.5 per track with M1 Max $3500 model. For Xcode, M1 MacBook Air is the best one if you do care about your cache 
for Lightroom, also M1 MacBook Air. As I said, it has a crazy good value for performance. In Blender, in my opinion, the best option is M1 Pro 14 inch for $2000 because in Party Talk test it has 9 seconds versus 6 seconds on the M1 Max but it has $2,000 price versus $3,500, so the 14 has better value. For Final Cut Pro 10 working with 4K files in H.264, M1 MacBook Air is 3 minutes and 9 seconds for $1,000 versus 1 minute and 52 seconds for $3,500 on the M1 Max 16. So once again, the M1 Air is winning here. And if you work in Final Cut Pro 10 with ProRes footage, the best value is going to base M1 Pro 14 inch. Whoa, it's been a long video, guys. I guess now it's much more clear for you which M1 MacBook is the best option for you and your workflow. Once again, big shout out to MacStack. Hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did, smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say in my videos and hit the notifications bell. My name is Oleg Nikitin from Russia with Love, No Limits on channel and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.